All right, everyone, welcome to episode number six of No Traps, No Glory. Uh, first off, I want to say this time I'm going to be very mindful of keeping the microphone at a convenient distance from my mouth so that way it doesn't sound like I'm eating it the entire time like our previous podcast with Viv was. So hopefully my voice will be a little bit more amenable to your ears, at least in the initial. So uh, I got that consideration under wraps. I hope everybody enjoyed episode number five. I had a lot of fun doing that. And also, too, we're going to have Viv back on. She's going to interview me. So this time I could come prepared with a monstrous, unnecessary notepad. So uh, to answer my own questions of her questioning me, like we did, uh, regarding the American Open. So I'm going to be going to the American Open uh, next week from this time. I'm going to coach a couple people, and we'll just go over what my experience is going to be. So you could look forward to that in the next upcoming edition, which would most likely be episode seven. Uh, but here today on episode six, what we're going to do is we're going to discuss goals and setting goals and achieving them. And uh, just a, essentially just a thought process that I have and have been working on and trying to manifest a little bit more. I'll actually say we did a, we did a recording for the podcast, but I wasn't too happy with it and I wanted to redo it to provide a little bit more concise explanation, allow my thoughts to manifest a little bit better and hopefully give you guys a better understanding of where my thoughts are, what I'm thinking, and then be able to go a little bit further into it from there. So without further ado. So, on to goals. <sighs> Let's say weightlifting, obviously in life as well, but we'll try to keep the microcosm of weightlifting in its own entity for the moment being. When you're setting goals, and at least I'm going to try to at least go from my experience on this with, with terms of goals, is uh, I'll, I'll quantify goals or classify goals rather in, in two different instances. One, let's say very specific, and two, that are a little bit more general. So general is obviously less concrete, but still something I want to work towards. And when establishing and developing goals, you have to determine what the worth is going to be for you and what you have to do to achieve it. So let's say again, like the microcosm of weightlifting, but this, this also carries to into life, and I'll, I'll give a couple examples of that uh, further on. But when you establish goals, let's say if you want to you, you wanna snatch a certain weight, you have to establish, okay, I want to snatch this weight, but you got to give yourself a timeline that you want to do it by. And then that therefore allows you to backtrack and say, okay, if let's say two months time, I want to make weight X, what do I need to do in order to achieve that and get to that point? So you establish, okay, I need to be pulling X amount of weight consistently. I need to be snatching, let's say this weight by the halfway point and then work to where if I can do reps or so with uh, another particular weight that's maybe, let's say, 10 kilos, 5 kilos less than that, then I'll be able to make my said goal. And these are things that you want to work towards. Now, personally, as how I coach, how I train, as it, and as I've been brought up, uh, I don't, we don't provide, let's say, a concrete program. So this week you're going to do this, this week you're going to do this, and so forth. Obviously, yes, we have the objective in the end, but still we go by feel and push and work accordingly, so that way... It, it, the program is open and loose to how you feel that day and how you're going to be able to work yourself towards that based upon, let's say, where you are in your current cycle. So hopefully everyone's following me with this. And what I mean by that is it's very tough to plan and say, okay, I'm going to do this on this day, I'm going to do this on that day, because you, know, you don't know what each day is going to bring. You could have a terrible day at work, you could be, have not slept well, you could feel, come in feeling terrible, but you could have a solid day and you, you could actually push a little bit further. So when you have a goal like that, you want to work yourself to it. And again, like I said, establish the benchmarks, but be flexible in go, being able to go to those points because ultimately it's not each individual day that has to be so particular. You want to get to the end result and that's why it's called a goal. And further too, let's say going outside of that, you, bigger goals or let's say goals that are beyond a, a specific number, you want to know that that's the long-term objective. Some things take much longer to be able to get to as opposed to a particular number at a particular time. Let's just even say in a, in a, from myself in a either weightlifting sense or even in a business sense, there have been goals that I've had, the things that I know, ideas that I've had that I want to get to, but I have no idea how to even manifest a plan to it. I just know where I want to be. And those are things where you have to take the time to put yourself in the positions to be able to get there. Very much like taking, let's say, if I'm going to do snatch a double with 75 on this day, 
and then work to a double with 85 to ultimately snatch, I don't know, 93, 95. It's, it's having the idea, and I think and what I'm getting at with this is I think the idea and the objective of where you want to be is more important per se than the individual steps that you take to get there. And the reason being is if you know exactly what you want and where you want to be, you will do, this, you will do what's necessary and do what's according in order for you to be able to achieve and get to that point. And that's something personally from experience that I firmly believe in. Okay, so that's a little bit of a training example. Now I'm going to get into a little bit more of me personally and how I apply this. Because in training, I obviously have goals and things that I want to make. And let's say Mark, he'll give me, he'll say, if you want to, if I want to jerk 150, I got to be doing four doubles with 140 or four doubles with 135, somewhere around there in order to know that, okay, now I'm prepared to be able to get to that point. So going into a little bit further with that is, is how to achieve your goals. So let's say, forget the specifics of numbers at the moment, but the mindset that you have to have to achieve goals. And with the mindset to achieve goals, you have to be, it comes down to what you have to do, not, not physically within the gym, but outside of the gym or outside of your life or in your life even in total in order to achieve those goals. So let's say for me to, I know, I know for myself that if I need, if when I'm really concentrating on what I have to do to make these goals for lifting, I know outside of my life what I need to cut out in order to make sure that I can achieve these. So outside stressors, extra work, doing extra things, these are things that it, to push harder as an athlete I need to make sure they're completely removed in order for me to be able to achieve the numbers that I want to achieve. And the reason for that is that they stress you. You have extra stressors. The longer you work at work, the less energy you have for training. The more activities you involve yourself in, the less energy you have to devote to each exercise that you're going to do. And even more so, more importantly than the exercises, is the less energy you're going to have towards recovery. The more time, it's not, it's not even the time in the gym that's most important, it's the time outside of the gym that's more important because if you can't recover from one training session to the next physically and mentally, it's going to be very difficult for you to be able to have consecutive training sessions. Now, like I said, you have your end objective. Let's say you want to snatch, what did I say, 93, 95. That's your end goal. Everything that you do is cumulative to get to that point. So each individual day is collective. If you have three bad sessions in a row, it's going to be very difficult for you to be able to make up upon that, but because each session accumulates. You know your end goal, but ultimately those three sessions are going to help be pulling you down and bogging you down. So you have to do what's necessary to put yourself in a best position possible, and that is learning how to navigate yourself through life because everything is relative to one another. And I mean, let's say going for example, this is, is, is a venturing more into the business aspect, and I'm going to get into this as well, is I remember long ago, this one guy that I was working with, I uh, was just, just training him, just an older gentleman, wanted to get in shape and such, just back when I was first starting to train people. He, a very successful businessman. He had a multi-million dollar company. He had a multi-million dollar house in, uh, I believe, Stanford it was or so. But we were just discussing things, and what he was telling me, he showed me a hallway. There was a particular hallway where I was working with him, and a door at the end with a sign, whatever the sign said, like stairway or, or what have you. Like, but he goes to me, you see the door down there? That's where you want to be. But all these other corridors, everything in between, there's going to be stuff flying at you every direction, one way to the next. But that's where you want to get to. And that's got to be your end objective. So no matter what's coming at you, you have to be able to navigate and divide your way to where you can get directly to the point where you want to be. And it, obviously it stuck with me. I'm telling you here now, uh, what, four or five years later, if not a little bit more than that. Because it stuck with me because it, it made me realize that when you, and it took a while too for me to be able to get an understanding of things that I want. And I'm sure a lot of people have that too, where they're trying to figure out what they want in life, where they want to be, feel like they have direction and such. But once, once you have that idea, and I personally feel that I have that now, uh, getting to where it will let nothing get into the, nothing to distract me from getting to that point. There's things coming at me this way, things coming at me that way, but I have to learn how to deflect and brush them off in order to get directly to that goal. Now, for training purposes, you have to learn, again, like I said, to, okay, I'm not going to go out with my friends this day because I'm more, more focused on my goal. I have to get here. 
So this is what I'm going to do. I know I'm going to, if I go out, it's going to make me tired. I shouldn't do that because I want to have a good training session the next day. Or uh, I could have the opportunity to go on a trip or I can go uh, just do extra work, whatever it may be. I'm going to cut that out of my life because I need to put all my energy towards getting to this goal. And your success is determined upon that. Me as a coach, athletes, I can tell when people come in if they're doing more outside of work or if they're, they're having a rough time in their personal life or doing more in their personal life based solely upon how they're training because their training immediately goes down. If someone's very focused, they're consistent, dedicated, they're not having any extra uh, whatever it may be, activities going on, their training's very good, it goes up and it's always going to be that way because we have x amount of energy there's only so much energy there's only so much water in a glass that we can fill and so much that we can empty out before we're either empty or we're over well the overfilling doesn't matter but so much before we're empty and once you're empty it's very difficult to be able to in a training sense to be able to get that back and apply that and the same for goals so you have to determine what especially in when it comes to lifting where you are what you're doing and how you're going to be able to get there. Now, so too, if you're doing a lot, don't mentally get upset with that and they'll think that that's gonna detract, or I'm sorry, don't mentally get upset and think, why can I not make the right weights that I was doing because it's not gonna be absolutely possible. You may have some good days, but you may have more bad days. But so you have to know where you're gonna be in order for you to be able to make the progress that you want. Now, I'm gonna kinda venture out a little bit and hopefully try to give a little bit more personal examples and just speak from my standpoint and try to tie everything in together. So, um, me personally, I have many, I have big goals training wise, and I also have big goals for the gym and what I'd like to achieve with that. And in order for me to do so, I, if, I've been doing what I have been long enough to where at least I have, at least at this point in my life, I have an idea of what I need to do in order to achieve the or take the necessary steps rather for me to achieve what I'd like to achieve so for my training goals right now um, I know what I need to do in order to get back to the position to where I or position where I was and then even further where I want to be so I got to let a couple little things that I have heal up so I can then be able to push a little bit harder but in the interim I'm going to focus on other aspects that I need to do such as let's say flexibility or the better position work so then that way when the time comes and my body is really prepared to go I can push harder and hopefully make to the point where I'm exceeding my bests and making records and getting to exactly where I want to be now in the business sense and hopefully this all ties together because really weightlifting and the out, how you lift or I'm sorry weightlifting and the outside world they're the same thing how you conduct yourself on the platform is how you conduct yourself in life I have decent goals, at least I'd like to think good goals with what I'd like to achieve with the gym, with my lifters, and be able to take everyone to where they would like to be and be able to elevate the status of the gym and the business to where now all of a sudden I'm achieving what I've never thought possible. And I wouldn't be able, wouldn't have not have been able to do that had I not had the experience on the platform knowing how to conduct myself personally with the barbell. So I'm going to digress a little bit. A few weeks back, one of my training partners did an interview with me for a class that she was under uh, was taking, and it was just an interview, I guess, in the sense of just asking about business, about my career change, and such. And one of the things that she asked was about sacrifice. And along the way, she said, "What sacrifices have you made in order to achieve what you are?" And it, it took me a moment to answer the question because what threw me off was the word sacrifice. And personally, I don't like, I really don't like the word because one, the definition of sacrifice is, is giving something up. Well, obviously, every, it's, and it's used very loosely with how a lot of people phrase things today, but it's giving something up or it's a devotion in a religious sense and obviously you know, an offering or something that's, that's taken and removed from you. And the reason I don't like that is because Everything I do and what I have done, whether on the platform or outside for personal life business, it's, I prefer either trade-off or exchange because sacrifice is something that's done outside of my volition, where everything that I've done has been my own choice, has been my intention. And I think it allows you to have a lot more understanding of what you're trying to achieve and what you're trying to do. The word sacrifice, when you hear people say it, is 
Uh, it's a sacrifice, or at least how I interpret it, where it's something that someone doesn't want to give up, but they're forced to give up. Now, when you're making these goals, you have to understand that, and this comes down to, if someone's going to look at, okay, well, it's a sacrifice for me to go out on the weekend, or I have to sacrifice going out on the weekend because I have to train the following day, but, oh, my friends had so much fun. Look on Instagram, and the stories are great, and you feel like you're missing out, and everyone gets FOMA and all that, but you have to understand, what's it worth to you? Now, is it worth to you to have the trade-off to where you can then, let's say, achieve the goals on the platform? You want to snatch the 95. Okay, so, no, you know what? I want to snatch 95, so I'm not going to go out. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to go home. I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to take an Epsom salt bath. I'm going to eat as many beans as I can because I like beans. And then I'm going to go to bed at 8 o'clock so I can have a good day. Or are you going to go out and then come in, have a poor day, and be like, oh, why did that happen? And... That's how I've conducted everything that I've done. So like as I answered her when she, she queried me about that, is I don't like the word sacrifice because I haven't sacrificed anything. In the typical sense, let's say traditional lifestyle of, of how people conduct themselves, maybe, but I don't consider it such. I consider it a trade-off because I find the worth in what I want to achieve as being more valuable than, let's say, the the small instances or the, the brief enjoyments that I get out of it. And when you coming into your goal setting, when you're focusing on what you want to achieve personally on, in the gym, business-wise, whatever it may be, you have to understand that the value of what you're wanting to achieve is what you're looking at. And what's that value relative to you? So for me, I would love to jerk and want to work to jerk 160. That's my goal. So I'm going to cut out what I need to cut out in order for me to be able to do so because that's what I want to do. And there's things that I don't need to go out on a Saturday night. I'll go to the sauna instead. That's going to help me. What are the things that are going to be conducive to my goal? And all the steps that I'm going to take are going to help, at least as I'm going to try to my best effort, put the steps in needed to help push me in the direction that I want to be. I'm not going to just do what I want to do and have fun and live in the moment because... I know that long term, everything adds up. I may not have a direct plan each day. There may not be days that go in my favor, but ultimately I'm going to keep my eyes focused on the, the sign on the end of the door. I'm not going to let anything stop me from getting there because that's ultimately how I'm going to be able to achieve it. And I remember, let's say, when Klokov was here, what he was saying is, it doesn't matter what your coach is. It doesn't matter what the training program is. You could have the best coach. You could have the best training program. But if you don't believe in it, it doesn't mean anything. If you have full belief in what you're going to do, full belief in your program, full belief in your coach, that's more important and more meaningful than anything else. So when I set my goals and when you set your goals, if you firmly believe in it, you know that you can achieve it, you're going to put everything you can in it, you'll be able to do so. And that's not a sacrifice. That's exchange of value. You're exchanging other aspects in order to achieve and obtain what you want to attain. And that, I think, is a very good thing. I don't think it's selfish. And if it is selfish in terms of the negative connotation that the word selfish has uh, really acquired, it's not a bad thing. It's good to be selfish with that because it's going to help make you better. And in turn, that's going to make everything around you better. The more you're able to achieve your goals, the more experience you're going to gain, the more you're going to be able to help other people as a result because you know what it takes and what you have to do to be able to get to that point. And that's what I think, at least I'd like to contribute in terms of what I've, uh, let's say, if you want to say coaching ability, how I've developed and what I've attained to be able to instill to my lifters and hopefully be able to communicate better with them because of the experience that I have in that sense. So I think that's, that's fairly lengthy, very wordy, um, hopefully not too verbose per se but I think really for you when you set a goal you have to determine what are you willing to give up to do so and for some people they're not willing to give up anything but if you're not going to you're not willing to give things up you're going to have to understand that the results are going to reflect that if you're willing to give up anything then that's not a bad thing but you are going to work in accordance and in or uh, in the circumstance that you're creating in order for you to be able to achieve what you want to achieve Okay, so what does this all mean? Hopefully the examples that I gave kind of make everything a little bit more uh, digestible. But ultimately, and this comes further into the grand scheme of things in terms of why we do this, what the purpose is, and 
how this really lends to it. Like I said in the beginning of this, it, weightlifting is a microcosm for your life. So uh, when people come in, like I said, I can tell you how their, how their day has been, how their life has been, what's going on. But ultimately, it comes down to, let's say, how you conduct yourself on the platform and the goals that you set for yourself on the platform, they transcend and they carry over into your everyday life. So that leads to the question, really, of what is the purpose of setting a goal? Now, we went over a little bit about how, how you set your goals, way to go about it, but what is the purpose of setting a goal? And why do we do it? Because for the, just for the fun of it? No, we do it because of things that we want to achieve. And there's, if you're not willing to achieve anything or you don't want to achieve anything, there's no purpose in setting a goal. But when you demand more of yourself, that's ultimately why you set goals, because you want to do more for yourself, you want to achieve more, you have motivations. And I'd like to read this quote for you that I have here in terms of, to tie in everything of why it's important and is to hold one's own life as one's ultimate value and one's own happiness as one's highest purpose are two aspects of the same achievement. So how I interpret that and what that means is you set a goal because you're living your life and you're living your life with purpose for yourself and that's a good thing. It's good to be selfish in that nature because you are willing to exact the most out of your life and your experience for yourself and that in turn makes you better personally, it makes you better in the world and it allows you to do more for your, not only yourself but as a result, as a, an after effect for everybody else that you come in contact with. For me to set the goal of jerking 160 that makes, I mean, that's my selfish goal. I'm, what I'm, let me tell you what I'm going to do in order to do it. I'm going to take less, uh, I'm sorry. I'm going to spend less time on unnecessary stressors. I'm going to cut out things that I don't need in my life, such as either going out on a certain day. I'm going to spend more time getting massage, more financial resources for the said massage and other things to keep my body in good shape. I'm going to spend money on better food, so it's going to financially cost me. Um, Emotionally, maybe I will not speak to certain people. I mean, I don't speak to many people now, but <laughs> nonetheless, uh, limit who I come in contact with because certain people are negative and they may drain my energy or certain experience, uh, not experience, certain circumstances or situations are very draining, so I'm going to exclude myself from it because these are steps that I need to take because I want to jerk 160. So now, let's say if I have to go to a charity or something like that. No, I can't go. I want to go to bed. It's Saturday night. It's going to be up till 11 o'clock. That's going to mess me up. I, can't, I know that and I can't do that, so I'm not going to go to it. They may be selfish acts. They may be what some people deem inconsiderate, but it's what I'm going to do because I know that's what I have to do to achieve these goals. And what am I looking for? I'm looking for my purpose of achievement and I'm looking for the happiness that I'm going to get out of that achievement. But what's going to come with that? And what's going to come with that is I'm going to gain the experience of knowing what I have to do, of lifting heavier weights to push myself further as an athlete, which is only going to help benefit me coaching and working with everybody that I work with. I'm going to be able to better communicate because I'm going to learn from the experience and I'm going to be able to have better ideas of how to approach other lifters, approach my lifters to be able to elevate them further up. And that is really a, a great benefit because of the actions that I take. And that is really a, a very good after effect of goals because just because I have the goal of jerking 160 doesn't mean it ends there. It's going to have a ripple effect and that's going to carry out. And that effect is going to benefit not only myself, but I'd like to thank everybody else. And then from that experience, I'll be able to carry that into, again, like I said, working with everybody better to hopefully better the gym, better the lifters, and that in turn creates a better business, which benefits me, better fits everybody else that comes here. So, in conclusion, you have to take everything as it comes and how you'd like to see it. What trade-offs are you willing to make and what are you willing to take at the same time? And that's a very good thing, in my opinion. There's no such thing as sacrifice. Sacrifice is something being stricken from you, and you don't want that. Why would you, let's say, want to have something taken from you that you could use or at the same time have goals that are meaningless? And that's really how you want to be able to push yourself forward because, again, your self-esteem, your self-achievement, that is going to make you a better person and being a better person is going to make you live a much more fulfilling and happier life. 
that's how I live my life. That's hopefully the message I get across to everybody. And I think that's a very good way to go about it because ultimately it's your life. It's how you live. The goals you set are going to establish where you go and how you get to certain positions is going to determine how you live the rest of your life. So you might as well make it a good one. You might as well have good goals with it too. So that's my thought process. That's how I'd like to conclude this podcast of no traps, no glory. And with that, next time, we look forward to bringing you an update on the American Open, how my experience went there, and further thoughts that I might have. So thank you, everybody, for listening, and we will speak to you soon.